Games often stick to their own parameters, their own worlds, and often never acknowledge the player in order to keep immersion. However, some games don't follow this rule. Some games get tired of messing with the main character and decide to toy with you, the player. So here's the top 10 examples of games breaking the fourth wall. Black and White 2 is a god game mixed with elements of city building and real-time strategy. If one of your followers dies, the game alerts you by whispering the word death. This is already creepy enough, but sometimes a voice will instead whisper your name. Some players have even reported hearing their real name, despite using a different one in-game. While the specifics are unclear, it's believed Black and White 2 either searches your hard drive for a name that comes up often, or checks the name your operating system is registered to. Then it matches the name against the list. If your name is unusual, it's unlikely to be on Black and White 2's list. If you have a common name though, be prepared for a creepy whisper to call out to you personally. Alien Isolation is a terrifying experience on any system, but it includes a special treat for players playing the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One versions, an option called Noise Detection. Noise Detection is a simple feature. It allows Alien to detect noises picked up by your microphone. That's right, as you try to sneak through Sevastopol Station, the Alien can actually hear you. You better hope no one in your house tries talking to you while you're hiding. In the game Kane and Lynch Dead Men, Lynch eventually has a psychotic episode that causes him to fire on unarmed hostages. If you play the game alone, it will just look to you as though he's gone crazy and is shooting them for no reason. He seems to think they're attacking him even though they clearly aren't. Co-op puts one player in control of Kane and the other in control of Lynch. While nothing changes for the player controlling Kane, the player controlling Lynch will actually see the hostages as armed enemies. Since it's co-op, this has the surreal effect of not only making that player see what Lynch sees, but also putting the other player in Kane's shoes as they try to figure out what in the world their friend is doing. Hideo Kojima loves playing with the fourth wall, and one of the best examples shows up in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Throughout the game, the colonel guides you and gives you advice on completing your mission. Near the end, however, he begins to break down. His erratic behaviour is disturbing enough in the context of the game, but then he orders Raiden to turn the game console off oh, right now. What did you say? The mission is a failure. Cut the power right now. What's wrong with you? Don't worry, it's a game. It's a game just like usual. You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. What are you talking about? A few other comments also address the player and this whole sequence thoroughly startled people who didn't know what to expect. Some were so spooked they obeyed. We can only hope they didn't lose too much progress due to Colonel's insanity. This isn't the only time Metal Gear Solid 2 breaks the fourth wall. Again, Kojima loves this, but it's the most threatening. Undertale plays around with the fourth wall in many ways. Certain characters remember you across multiple playthroughs, and if you reload the game in order to save Toriel after killing her, Flowery knows exactly what you did. But it reaches a whole new level after you battle with Asgore. Flowery appears, mocks you, and then the game crashes. When you reload, Flowery erases your save file so you can't escape, and promises to save your death so you can die over and over. In the resulting boss battle, Flowey crashes the game every time he defeats you. It doesn't stop there either. If you restart the game after completing a full playthrough, 
Vlari explains that you can undo everything to play a game, and begs you not to erase everyone's happiness just for your own amusement. Oh, and if you complete a genocide playthrough, you might think you can erase that outcome by starting over again, but the game will always remember what you did. Always. The entire concept of I'm Scared, a pixelated nightmare is based on this very idea. At first, it seems to be a mediocre horror game, but then the game crashes. Its folder now contains an important text file explaining that entities can be turned into data. And one of these entities is haunting your computer. Imagine if your computer was infected by a sentient, malevolent virus. That is the core of I'm Scared's Horror, not the pixelated horror game you play through. Messages, images, and more all serve to blur the line between the game and reality, making you the protagonist, rather than just the player. As far as I'm Scared is concerned, the fourth wall doesn't exist and its premise means it can toy with your paranoia more than most horror games can. Even once you quit the game, you might find yourself wondering if it's really over. Batman Arkham Asylum features a number of Batman villains, including Scarecrow, whose fear toxin adds some horror elements to the game. Partway through the game, he stops targeting the character and directs the fear toxin at you. As you're playing, the screen and audio suddenly glitch. To console players, it looks like the disc has a problem or the system is dying. To PC players, it mimics the effects of a failing GPU. Either way, it causes a moment of real-world panic. Then, the game restarts, and everything is wrong. It returns to the opening scene, Except this time, the Joker escorts Batman into a twisted version of Arkham Asylum. It ends with the Joker shooting him, and the resulting game over screen encourages console players to dodge the shot by using the middle stick, and players to tilt the mouse. Many players prepare to follow this ridiculous instruction before the game continues, and it becomes clear Scarecrow was just reaching beyond the fourth wall. Scarecrow returned to do this again during E3 2014 when the Batman Arkham Knight trailer glitched out and froze before revealing him to the audience. Kimito Kanajo to Kanajo to Kai is a visual novel that has never been officially translated into English. On the surface, it seems like a normal visual novel if one that breaks the fourth wall a bit. As you play, the protagonist gets into a relationship with his childhood friend Miyuki, and her route concludes like normal. Like many of these games, there are multiple routes, so the natural thing for the player to do is to start the game again and try to form a relationship with the other girl, Aoi. At the end of Aoi's route, Miyuki goes crazy and murders Aoi and the protagonist, she accuses him of cheating on her with Aoi, which confuses him since he's never pursued Miyuki in this route. Then she says she's not talking to him, she's talking to you, the player. She then rewrites the game and deletes your save files so you can't go back. The only way to escape is to use a code from the game's packaging to call God and reset the world so that only one of the two girls exists. You like Castlevania, don't you? Before Colonel scared players in Metal Gear Solid 2, the first Metal Gear Solid already shattered the fourth wall numerous times, but especially with Psycho Mantis. Did we mention Hideo Kojima really loves doing this sort of thing? Psycho Mantis has psychic powers, and he uses them during his boss battle, not on Snake, but on you. Psycho Mantis moves your controller, makes it appear as though the console has shut down, references the number of times you've saved, 
and comments on other games you've played by reading your memory card. Eventually, the only way to overcome his powers and win the battle is to switch the controller to another socket so he can't predict what you're going to do. I've got it! Use the controller port. Plug your controller into controller port 2. If you do that, he won't be able to read your mind. In the GameCube remake, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, Psycho Mantis adds a few new hallucination tricks to his repertoire, including one that makes the room tilt. This was added as a shout out to other games created by the same developer, which brings us to the final entry on our list. Before the developer Silicon Knights worked on the Twin Snakes, they developed a survival horror game for the GameCube called Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Eternal Darkness was the game that popularized the use of a sanity meter, but many of its sanity effects don't target the characters so much as the player. As you're playing, the game might appear to crash, the rooms tilt, the volume changes, while displaying a volume bar on the screen. Instead of saving your game, the save menu asks if you want to delete your files and then tells you they've been erased. These are just a few tricks Eternal Darkness uses. Its regular sanity effects are standard horror fare, especially for a game focused on Lovecraftian themes like this one, but the ones that break the fourth wall are unexpected and startling. Eternal Darkness is a horror game that toys with the player's fears, and that makes it our choice for the number one time the fourth wall couldn't protect you. I hope you enjoyed this week's list and if you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more lists now, click here for my top 10 worst gaming companions or here for my top 10 rarest Pokemon cards. And if you want to see more in the future, subscribe.